Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, also BettingAngle.us. Today is January 30th, 2024. Let's talk about Shakur Stevenson's shock announcement that he's retiring from the sport in his mid-twenties after picking up three titles. Now, let me just make a few points. Boxing's a dangerous sport. Uh, obviously, the fighter's decision uh, should be honored. Uh, we all live different lives. Uh, we all think we know everything that's going on. We might not, right? So I don't want people to think that uh, for a second I have any inside information whatsoever. Let me just say, Shakur Stevenson has good people around him. That much I know. I get the frustration. No one wants to fight him. His peers, and it matters, folks like Devin Haney, who he sparred against, and Gervonta Davis, for example, have gotten big paydays and are getting a lot of press. Right? I get the idea, too, that fights are really group decisions. We can pretend here that you know, Shakur Stevenson gets to pick his opponents and the opponents get to decide whether they want to fight him. In actuality, fights are group decisions. The other side also gets to pick and choose. Promoters might not want to pay you full value against opponents who might not bring in huge crowds. Right? That's the reality. I'm sure he's had some conversations with some promotional types who've explained to him the financial reality, right? Let me also say, too, that a fighter, uh, especially one who spars with a lot of other fighters and who has had a decorated amateur career that includes an Olympic medal, uh, a fighter might know they could beat certain elite fighters, and yet it's the opponents who are getting the big fights, Right, folks, that's always going to be part of boxing. Right, champions are going to pick opponents who they feel they can beat. How else do you explain not only Tyson Fury fighting Francis Ngannou, but now Anthony Joshua fighting Francis Ngannou, who, of course, has yet to win a professional pro match. Right, I'm not saying Francis Ngannou hasn't acquitted himself well in the sport. But all I'm saying is he's picked for a reason, right? These champs aren't running out to fight Gili Zhang. They're running out to fight Francis Ngannou. Let's also get real, too. Boxing has different groups, right? There's a great video. It's really one of the best boxing interviews you're going to see of one side of the aisle. It's... David Benavides getting interviewed by Mike Tyson on Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson, right? You would have thought that Benavides and Tyson go back 15 years, right? They're laughing together. Benavides is talking about how he wants fights and how punching power matters in fights. And of course, he has an audience who's already convinced of that, right? Mike Tyson. So a lot of the interview is Benavides and Tyson laughing and nodding together. And you understand, okay, I've stumbled into a front foot party. This is the front foot side of the aisle, right? This isn't the Ali, uh, Chris Bird, uh, Pernell Whitaker back foot side of the aisle. This is a front foot party. Now, I understand when it comes to Shakur Stevenson, some fans, the front foot crowd, for example, the crowd where the first question is, hey, does the guy have punching power? Right? That crowd might not appreciate Stevenson's back foot game. I understand that Stevenson got booed at his last fight. Okay, you know, you realize you're not loved and won't be loved by this crowd, right? If it's a contest between you and Gervonta Davis, a puncher who is front foot and heavy punch, right? We get it. We get it. My advice to Shakur Stevenson is Tika Tawari's advice. Tika Tawari, excellent crypto investor. Check him out. And that advice is to let the game come to you. Do what you do best. 
right? If anyone is telling you to change your style and to be front foot, you need to actively ignore them. You're a back foot guy. There is a back foot crowd, right? I imagine if Ali was interviewing Pernell Whitaker, they'd be laughing and having a good time talking about the back foot, making guys miss, defensive brilliance, how, you know, they had the slugger following them around the ring like a lost puppy. You know, my point to you is understand, we talk as if we're a unified, you know, fan nation for boxing. We're actually balkanized, right? You have different groups who follow boxing. Some people want knockouts. Some people want great defense, right? I keep telling people that I was in Mexico um, the night of the Pernell Whitaker, Julio Cesar Chavez fight. And it was clear to us, me and my group, that Pernell put on one of the great performances in history. Of course, after that fight, they called it a draw. <laughs> the next day in the papers, if you speak Spanish, the headline was Los Gringos Nos Robaron. Right? Um, you know, the gringos robbed us was the headline in the paper the next day, right? There were people who thought that Chavez had won the fight. So, you know, if I'm Shakur Stevenson, um, you have to realize you can't be everything to everyone. You can't make everyone happy. The reason you're a three-time champion is because of spectacular defense, timing, the things you have spent a lifetime developing. You never want to abandon those, right? But I also want Stevenson to realize, and a lot of these entertainment-type people, folks who, when they were a teenager, were preparing to be a professional prize fighter, right? You know, folks who have been to the Olympics, who have spent their lives traveling internationally for boxing matches, preparing for this career, and then who, in the course of their career, have been able to get six, possibly seven figure paydays. What I just want Stevenson is uh, to consider is we get the fact that Olympic medalists, three-time world champion guys get frustrated. You want real frustration. Try losing your job and then trying to feed your kids without falling behind on your mortgage or rent. Right? Maybe life outside of boxing looks exciting when you haven't lived life outside of boxing. Maybe after hanging around with Terrence Crawford and other people while you're in the game, maybe you think that if you leave the game, your peer group, people in their mid-20s, are going to be having a lot of money, driving in limos, <laughs> you know, traveling around the world, attending fights, player, I got news for you, life ain't like that, right? So I just need for these guys living superstar lifestyles to realize that you might be frustrated living that lifestyle, right? Just think about the lives everyone else is living. Let me say this too. You know, you think it's hard now turning on your TV and watching Devin Haney beat Regis Progre and or attending the fight and seeing him beat Regis Progre and making a lot of money, uh, getting interviewed by the media. If you think that's tough now when you're in the sport, just imagine when you're out of the sport and you don't have an opportunity to fight Devin Haney anymore because you've retired, right? Promoters have lost your number. Uh, Devin Haney now can say, hey, I'm not going to fight. Shakur Stevenson, because he's been retired. He's going to have to work his way back into the sport for the opportunity to fight me. Let me just say, too, Antonio Tarver, who fought Roy Jones, right, when they were little, was on a sofa one day. Antonio's still around. The boxing media can talk to him, confirm the story. He was on a sofa. He turned on his TV. He saw Roy Jones on TV. And Tarver thought to himself, why is that not me? You know, I was in the ring with this guy. Uh, you know, I thought it was a pretty even give and take. What am I doing here on my sofa? 
Tarver got off the sofa. Of course, Tarver goes on to beat Roy Jones as a pro, uh, goes on to be the light heavyweight champion. Just food for thought. Let me say this too. And of course, anyone who has followed uh, boxing long enough knows that these fighters have competitive fires, even after they retire. So I was watching a Hector Camacho fight, right? Hector, by the way, underrated. A better fighter than you remember, right? Well, I was watching a Hector Camacho fight, and one of the sportscasters was a retired Ray Leonard, right? Ray had already retired. Keep in mind, Ray made a comeback. The Marvin Hagler fight was a comeback fight for Ray. Then Ray actually fought several guys. Then Ray retired again. So this is a multiple retired Ray Leonard. Right? He was retired before the first Hagler fight. Even held a press conference where he told Hagler, we're not going to fight. Then he came back. Right, Then he leaves the sport. Now he's a sportscaster in retirement. And of course, Hector Camacho, as only Hector could do, wins the fight, looks outside the ring, sees Ray Leonard with the TV crew, and starts calling out Ray. Now, Ray, of course, with millions in the bank, with a Hall of Fame career behind him, uh, you know, he's retired. You thought Ray could just wave at him and say, hey, Hector, good fight, good win. But that's not the way competitive fire works. Right? Thereafter, Ray Leonard ends up in the ring fighting Hector Camacho because his fire still burned. Right? We've all seen several fighters say, that's it, I'm done. I'm old enough to have remembered when George Foreman shocked everyone by walking away from the sport, retiring the first time, right? Like Shakur Stevenson is thinking of doing right now. I remember when Larry Holmes was so disgusted over the scoring in his fights against Michael Spinks that Larry Holmes, and those were the only fights Holmes had lost up to that point, Larry Holmes retired, right? That was Larry's first retirement, right? Understand, there's even a moment in boxing where the best in the sport, arguably, pound for pound at the time, Ray Robinson decided he was going to retire, and he walked away from the sport. Right? This is this would be like Terrence Crawford saying, hey, that's it. You know, I'm tired. Ray even had some negative things to say about boxing. Right? Robinson, that's Sugar Ray Robinson, said that, you know, he didn't enjoy the sport that much. He didn't enjoy getting hit in the head. Right? Of course, he comes back. <laughs> Think about it. Right? The best of the sport leaves. He decided he was going to be a dancer. I'm not making this up. Please Google this. He decided he was going to be a dancer. He preferred dancing to boxing, right? He apparently wanted to be a Sammy Davis Jr. type of guy. This is in the mid-50s. He ends up coming back to the sport. So, let me just say, my only advice to Shakur Stevenson, and everyone is offering him advice, as you could imagine. Let me add my two cents worth. My only advice to Shakur Stevenson is simply to stay in shape. Right? He might want to call Ray Leonard. Because Ray was a guy, Ray had an attached retina. There was a medical reason for Ray walking away from the sport the first time. Uh, but Ray kept himself in shape. Right? Ray never lost his love affair with the sport of boxing. So Ray was the guy who was retired, but yet Ray's in the gym, yet Ray's boxing with younger guys, yet Ray is staying in shape. Ray kept himself in athletic shape. That's my only advice to Shakur Stevenson. Right? Keep yourself in shape. Keep your skills sharp. Right? If the fire still burns, you'll find your way back into the ring. Right? The important part here, though, is 
to give yourself options. Don't be one of these guys who hits the buffet table, who loses the address for the gym, who decides he is going to actually be retired for 18 months and then decides he's going to come back. Right? No, be the guy who continues the athletic regimen, who continues to treat his body as a temple. Let me add one more thing. Continue to hang around your boxing friends. Right? You know, you don't want to blow up bridges. Right? The people who have helped your career, stay in touch with them. Right? Don't lose their numbers. The fighters you hang around, Terrence Crawford, others, continue to hang around them. Right? See if walking in the gym to visit your buddy uh, ignites that competitive fire where you actually want to get in the ring. <laughs> right? Uh, if it does, as I said, you'll find your way back. Right? Don't let the fact that getting fights at 135 get in the way of anything. I would argue, too, that you might even want to call Marco Antonio Barrera. He reached a point where he was so disgusted with the powers that be in boxing that he beat a champion when they came over to him with the belts in the ring. He refused to accept the belts. It was enough for him to know he had beaten the champion. Right? Talk to him about how you might want to go about your career. Right? If you have three belts but you're this frustrated, then what's the purpose of having had the belts? Right? Maybe what you want to do is to tailor your career a little bit differently where you're just targeting guys. Right? You know you want to fight Loma. You know you want to fight Devin Haney. Right? You know, the great Alexis Arguello was the man. Right? He was the man, but that wasn't enough. Right? He needed to go up one way class. He needed to fight Aaron Pryor. Right? Understand, it, it wasn't so much about titles. It was about a great champion in a weight class who he thought he could beat. Now, that first fight is clouded. Right? Pryor's corner does give him a water bottle that seems to energize him. Right? There are many who believe what was in that bottle, since Pryor had gotten another bottle, uh, wasn't water. Right? His cornerman... I won't even say his name. We'll protect privacy here. His cornerman um, says, not that bottle, the one I mixed. Right? That's the first fight. An argument can be made. That was his best shot to beat Aaron Pryor. They fought again. This time, Pryor, who was a great fighter, beats Alexis Arguello. But understand, Arguello got the satisfaction of fighting who he wanted. Right? To do that, you might need to jump weight classes. You might need to study and pick opponents who fit your fight style. Right? Don't have sanctioning bodies telling you all the people you need to fight. You might want to be a boxing free agent who is pursuing targets. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. To all of those watching this video, if you have ideas for Shakur Stevenson that you want to share here online, please feel free to do so in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.